Hey there, and welcome to another painting video. My name is Matt, and for the past month and a half, I've been working on my biggest project to date. And I mean, this thing is a monster. <laughs> well, at least for me it is. Prior to this, the biggest painting I had done had been a 30 by 30 inch landscape of a mountain in Colorado that I painted back in 2017. And at 24 by 48 inches, this dwarfs it. From start to finish, I logged 78 hours designing and completing this beast. This is also a special painting for me because it's the first one that I've completed from start to finish in my new studio. This video is going to be the first in a long line of videos explaining every step that I took to get this final result from initial sketches all the way up to building the frame. So let's go ahead and get into it. I've had the inspiration for this painting ever since a backpacking trip I took last October in North Carolina. I love the panoramic views up on the balds of the Southern Appalachians. The day after I got back, I went out and bought a canvas for this painting, knowing that I wanted to paint something big enough to capture the grandeur of these peaks. Before I can get started on a painting, there are a few steps that I have to take to ensure that everything goes according to plan. The first step is planning out my composition. After some research done online, I was very inspired by Andrew's Bald, a peak in Great Smoky Mountain National Park a little more than an hour away from my home here in Knoxville. I love the big grassy areas and thought that the open sky and panoramic views would make for a neat painting. However, for this piece, I didn't want to just copy a photo. So I get to work sketching out some ideas from my imagination, using Andrew's Bald as a reference point for the feel of the scene. I start by drawing out four different thumbnail sketches, changing certain aspects between each one like the contrast, shape of the mountains, and placement of the trees. I discover relatively quickly that I do want this big pine tree to be the primary focal point of the painting. I toy around with the placement of it as well as the addition of a path trailing off into the distance. For this painting, I want it to feel like you're actually there up on the mountain, so I decide right off the bat that about half of the painting is going to be a big grassy area in the foreground. Once I have a good idea of where everything fits, I drop a larger sketch that will act as a map for where everything will go on the larger painting. And here, I'm not trying to produce anything spectacular, just getting a good idea for the feel of the composition. On a whim, I decide that I like the pine tree more on the left than on the right, like I had had it in most of my thumbnail sketches, so I go ahead and shift it over. After I'm happy with my sketch, I get out a small canvas panel with the same dimensions as my final painting and paint what is called a color study. This will give me a greater idea of the depth of the final painting as well as give me some practice for when it's time to start it. I decide that I actually prefer the pine tree on the right, so I go ahead and shift it back over when sketching in the outline for my color study. At any point in this process, I can change certain aspects of the painting to see if they work better or not. When I'm blocking in the color study, I'm not spending much time on it at all. I don't pay any attention to details, I just focus on the overall feel of the painting. It may seem daunting to spend so much time just planning out a final painting, but I've found that following this design process saves me loads of time in the studio. By the time I reach the final painting, I have an exact picture of where I'm going to go, as well as a good map for what areas I might struggle with, because I've already been there and done it on a smaller scale. By the time I finish this color study, I've spent about four hours in planning alone. I know that sounds like a lot, but like I said, it is totally worth it in the end when I have such a clear vision of where this painting is going. Now, it's time to go ahead and start the real thing. I like to tone my canvases a deep brownish red to give a rich undertone for any scene. I find that doing it with a reddish tone allows my paintings to appear warmer and more lifelike because even after the three layers that I paint in, some of that red shines through. So the first thing that I do is cover the entire canvas with a mixture of burnt umber, mineral spirits, and liquid original. This is going to give me a good ground to work over. 
After I've coated the entire canvas, I go in and outline where all the elements are going to fit in my painting. I then go back with a paper towel and rub back some of those areas that have a lighter tone and shade in some areas that will appear darker. Again, this gives me a good map of where everything will fit and allows me to avoid going in blind when starting my block in. Typically that ground takes about 24 hours to dry, so I come back the next day and begin the first stage of my painting process, the block in. Just like in my plein air studies, I start with the sky and work my way down and forward in the painting. I decide to add these diagonal clouds as vectors that will point the eye toward the focal point of the painting, that big pine tree. I continue working forward with those distant mountains. They're going to appear blue at a distance, especially with the atmospheric distortion present in the Smoky Mountains. So I keep my tones light and deepen the saturation as I come forward. I slowly add small amounts of cadmium lemon to my highlights to represent glints of light on distant trees that blanket those mountains. I have to be careful not to add too much green though in the block in here. My tones are a little off because I went too saturated too quickly. So not a huge deal, but that is going to be something that I'll have to fix in the later stages. Next, I work on the bushes on the right in the midground. When painting foliage, I like to go in first with my shadows, then follow that with highlights over top. Here I'm using burnt umber and ultramarine blue for the shadows and a mixture of titanium white, yellow ochre, and ultramarine blue for the highlights. Following that same strategy, I go in with a very dark color for the base tone of the pine tree. As I'm doing this, I leave gaps where the highlights will go, and I'm using pretty much the same colors here that I did in the bushes, with just a touch of phthalo green to the highlights to bring out a little bit more saturation. Then I go in with yellow ochre, titanium white, and burnt umber to establish the highlights on the bark of the tree catching the sunlight. And as I just continue this process to the bushes on the left, adding shadows first, then highlights, I decide here that I want there to be a bit more separation on the left side. So I draw in a line to establish a clump of bushes that extend into the foreground. This is gonna make a secondary focal point in these bushes on the left. And then it's time to tackle the portion I've dreaded the most, the grass. I'll be honest, before this painting, I had never really painted grass like this. Such a big area was going to involve lots of detail, so for now, I just worry about establishing the base tone and leave those details for later. Future Matt can figure it out. And lastly, it's time for that path. Again, that's an area that I don't really have a strategy for at this point, so I just block in the base tone and decide to figure out the rest in the next layers. So, now that the painting is fully blocked in, let's take a look at a time lapse of this process from start to where it is now. Well folks, that just about does it. Thanks so much for watching this week's painting video. I hope you've enjoyed it and don't forget to tune in next week to see the second video in this series, where I begin to add more form and detail to this piece. You won't want to miss it. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you are the first to know when I post a new video. As always, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook or through my website, where you can see my entire gallery of finished works, as well as purchase prints and originals. All of those links are in the description below. Thanks for watching and happy painting.